Hello, my name is Clive Miller. Thanks for your attention. I have made this short video to explain how to pin down learning objectives and adopt the right learning strategies. Competence in anything is a combination of three things. Knowing what you should know, being able to do what you should be able to do, and habitually doing what you should do. So when you know what you should know, and you can do what you should be able to do, and you habitually do the things that should be done, you can be considered competent in a discipline. We can break up learning into different aspects of competence so that we can more easily specify what must be learned. In addition, recognising aspects of learning helps with selection of the most effective learning actions. Knowledge can be defined as memorised factual information relating to a subject. Formation of long-term memories is affected by motivation, repetition and use of the information in conversations. When something is new and exciting, like learning to drive a car, our brains soak up facts easily. Anticipation builds a framework in our minds to connect, to connect the information together. The excitement is a symptom of chemicals released in the brain that stimulate alertness and receptivity. Step-by-step -step methods and checklists can be memorised, although more complicated methodologies warrant use of written checklists and guides. And this is particularly true when skipping a step can have a disproportionate impact on the outcome. Uh, for aircraft maintenance and pre-flight checks and winning high-value sales are examples. Skill development depends on practice. The greater the frequency and duration of practice, the higher the level of skill required. According to research collected by Malcolm Gladwell and written down in his book Outliers, it takes 10,000 hours to become an expert in anything. Easily relatable examples include learning a language, learning to play a musical instrument and developing persuasiveness. Actions become habitual through repetition and the reinforcement of both failure and success. Failure to look over your shoulder to check your blind spot before overtaking the car in front can result in severe shock and embarrassment or worse. Remembering to look is positively reinforced when the glance prevents an accident. Motivation affects how quickly we can commit learning to long-term memory. Expectations, needs and interests combine to motivate learning. The euphoria of winning and the dejection of losing are examples that you are likely to have experienced. Personal qualities are more difficult to define, quantify and change. They are embedded in personality and are slow to change, yet do yield to persistent effort and therefore should be included here. As an example of why you might want to work on your personal qualities, if you want to become wealthy, adopting the qualities exhibited by people who create and attract wealth is a sensible strategy. Uh, if you want to provide better leadership, identify the qualities of outstanding leaders and make them your own. So this diagram aids recognition of the factors determining competence and provides a framework for construction of a competence model. To make practical use of it, define what you should know, what you should be able to do, and what you should do habitually to have competence in any particular discipline or aim. Links, tools and templates associated with this presentation help identify the factors that determine competence and aid the creation of a competence model. Well, thanks for listening. If you have questions about this material or would like to discuss your needs, I'll be pleased to respond or speak.